Tomb Raider 3 starts millennia ago like all good Tomb Raiders seem to, when a gigantic meteorite smashes into planet Earth and kills some crocodiles and rats. On a side note, did you ever suspect it was this meteorite which caused the cataclysm of Atlantis in Tomb Raider 1? But anyway, over the next few hundreds and thousands of years, some tribes of people worshipped at the site of the meteor crater for the magical powers held in four separate artifacts carved from the extraterrestrial rock. A couple of hundred years ago, Charles Darwin's crew discovered these artifacts, and after being eaten by some wolves, they managed to escape, and the four magic rocks were taken to the four corners of the Earth. Skip to 1998 and Lara Croft is sliding down the slippery slope of doom into an Indian jungle where she promptly disposes of some medipack thieving monkeys and Tarzans it through the trees into the research camp of a man called Tony, or Mad Tony as he prefers to be called since going completely mental under the influence of the Infada Stone. Anyway, Lara stupidly lets him walk away like a deranged person into a jungle full of hungry tigers. Realising that she should probably follow him, she does. No! Unfortunately, she gets nibbled by piranhas and bitten by poisonous cobras, and with no medicine around, damn those medipack stealing monkeys, she stumbles into a ruined temple where she hallucinates being chased by Hindu gods with big swords. After escaping their grasp, she gets pieces of the temple thrown at her by the delusional Mad Tony, who is standing on a shoddily made raft, floating down the river Ganges. He won't feel so clever when he realises he's heading towards a waterfall. Fool. Lara finds a conveniently placed quad bike near the shore of the river and gives chase, along the way taking out the frustration on some more monkeys. She follows Mad Tony through a labyrinth and into a secret lair, where she quickly makes him explode and nicks his ancient artefact. When she pops out of the jungle again, she hops on board the boat of the charming Dr. Willard, except she doesn't know he's actually a fiendish power-hungry swine. He tells Lara the story behind the artifacts and requests that she travel the globe in search of the others. At this point in the game we get to choose to go here, here or here. Let's visit Nevada first though, because if we don't, then we risk losing some of Lara's decent weapons later on in the story when something nasty happens. So Lara traipses through Nevada desert and after blowing TNT through a cliff face she emerges in a not so secret facility. Stealing another quad bike she attempts to jump over the security fence, but oh no! The aforementioned something nasty happens, and she crashes before getting captured by some members of parliament and slung into a high security prison full of big muscled prison folk. Lucky for Lara, they don't seem to like women in that way, and after staging a jailbreak, Lara and her newfound friends roam the prison beating up the guards. Once again, Lara displays her brilliant hiding skills when she hides where nobody would ever look, in the back of a delivery truck full of boxes. Well done, Lara, another excellent hiding place. With a stroke of luck, the truck drives right into the heart of Area 51, and after dodging some fiendish laser traps, launching a nuclear rocket and unwittingly starting World War III, Lara swims with a cast of Free Willy and then raids the Asgard puppet storeroom for Stargate SG-1. When she finds a real UFO parked in a hangar bay, she nips inside, and realising it's a much flashier version of the TARDIS, decides to steal a component which made it capable of interstellar travel, Element 115, which coincidentally was one of the meteorite artefacts Lara was searching for. Next, Lara flies the UFO through the skies to the South Pacific, taking everyone's mind off the fact she just blew up China. She crash lands into the ocean when it runs out of backup fuel and has to swim to a Paradisian beach island in search of shelter and probably food. I mean, have you ever seen her eat? She must be starving! What she does find though is that she's angered some blowpipe wielding tribal natives who must hate big bosomed women. So after evading the tribe that must have survived by using a turkey baster, she finds a man so hungry he tried to eat his own leg, but too embarrassed to admit it, he makes up some cock and bull story about someone else trying to eat it while he was asleep. Sure buddy, we believe you. Leaving him to rot, Lara ventures further inland, discovering a military plane crash site. Unfortunately for Lara, the surviving soldiers seem more interested in the dinosaurs than in her. After all, dinosaurs are old news for Lara. She takes the necessary steps to make them extinct once and for all by teaming up with the soldiers and blasting them into Dino Heaven, or Dino Hell if they've been bad. What follows is a strenuous test of patience, as Lara goes kayaking down some white rapids. Sounds simple, you say. Can you imagine trying to sail something that handled like half a Tesco shopping trolley and half a tractor down some white rapids? There you go then. Eventually, Lara enters the Lost Temple of Puna, an Indiana Jones tribute gone wild, where she faces the rumoured immortal Puna. It's a rumour she soon disproves as she fills him full of lead and steals his magic artefact, the Aura Dagger. Using the power of the three artefacts, Lara teleports to some dark London rooftops where she knees a man in the gonads and sends him flying through the air off the end of a giant bell. That's all well and good, Lara might think, but now she has to track down the elusive Miss Sophia Lee, a blonde bimbo who reportedly holds the final artefact. 
So instead of going straight to Miss Lee's offices, she briefly pops into an abandoned underground train station, as you do, where a freakish encounter with a subterranean gang of melty-faced, mask-wearing thugs called the Damned shed some light on Miss Lee's antics. Apparently, she'd been using her artifacts in experiments on beauty products and to find the cure for aging. The experiments failed on the Damned, and instead of getting plastic surgery, they decide to live like recluses beneath the streets of London. Finally, Lara enters Sophia Lee's office, where she turns down a job invitation before electrocuting the businesswoman against a scenic London skyline backdrop and steals the Eye of Isis. Lovely. With all the pieces of the meteorite in a magical Mary Poppins backpack, Lara hitches a helicopter ride to the South Pole to meet up with Dr. Willard in his research base near the meteorite crater. Unfortunately, the helicopter pilot had a death wish and landed on some thin ice moments before plunging into the icy depths and leaving Lara alone in the middle of a snowstorm. The water is far too cold to swim in, so Lara nips inside an anchored ship and brutally murders some of the crew so she can steal a dinghy, and in a state of ignorant bliss, she rises off down the icy river to meet Dr. Willard. He throws a table at Lara, kicks her in the face and runs off with the meteorite artifacts. Yoink! Lara chases him and ends up in the RX Tech Mines. The whole area is essentially one big snowy roller coaster ride, flicking switches here and there and battering some mutated human seal workers in order to reach the entrance to the lost city of Tinos, built aeons ago by the culture who revered the magical power of the meteorite instead of going out and getting jobs to provide for their families. After being attacked by monsters and stung by giant magic wasps, Lara descends into the meteorite cavern where she witnesses that mad Scott Dr. Willard throwing himself into a pool of magic liquid. With the power of the artifacts, he transforms into a big sort of spider man thing, hell bent on doing something. But it doesn't last too long because Lara takes back the artifacts and blows them up. As she escapes the meteorite cavern, Lara meets a pilot named Gary. Gary was a lovely man who recently married his childhood sweetheart Melissa and lived in a house with his three children, Ben, Ellen and... Oh, well never mind. Lara commandeers the helicopter and blows up some more soldiers before flying home after another gruelling adventure.